This video is a little bit of an interruption to the sequence. In the previous video, I showed how to read data in from files using MATLAB, but that code does not work in Octave. Now, I think I said at the end of that video that I was going to pick up in the next video right where I left off. Well, if you're just a MATLAB user, just skip this video, and then the very next video will pick up where the previous video left off. But I need to make an Octave-specific video to show how to read data in from file. And I'm going to use many but not all of the same files. So if you're an Octave user, what you want to be looking for is DLM read, which I believe stands for delimited read. And you can find these links. I'll link to this, um, this MATLAB or Octave document in the video description so you can find all the links there. And there's a few different ways to use DLM read. It's going to work really great with CSV files in particular or any file where there is a particular text delimiter. So I've got my basic matrix.csv file right here as the first input to DLM read, and then a comma, and then what is the expected delimiter? So if I'm separating my data with commas, I put a comma in single quotes. And then I can say, what row do I want to start reading on? And the indexing does start at zero, not one, which is a little confusing because most other things start at one with Octave and MATLAB. And then I can put in what column do I want to start reading from? So if I just want the entire document, row zero, column zero, separated by commas, this is what I use. That result is going to be placed into a variable named data as a matrix, and let's just go ahead and highlight it and run it. All right, and there is my data from the file. We can go open the file itself and verify that that is in fact what's inside of it. And there are those values separated by commas. All right, fantastic, and there's a few little variations on DLM read. We can say, oh, I just want starting from the second row, third column. Yes, it is slightly off by one, but anybody who's familiar with programming in other non-MATLAB languages should be pretty comfortable with indexing starting at zero rather than starting at one. So first row, zero, second row, one. First column, zero, third row, two. So let's run this section right here. And you can see that rather than the entire amount of data, I'm getting from row two on down and from column two on over to the right. And there it is right there. And there's even fancier versions of this DLM read right here. So here I've got some code to get a particular subset of the data. Um, I create four variables just for the sake, I think, of making clear what these variables represent. You don't have to do this. I could have just put the numeric values into this vector right here, but I named them. So row start, row end. We're going to go from row one to row three. Column start, column end. We're going to go from column two to column three. Now, this is indexing starting at zero. So this is actually row two to row four, column three to column four. And then I pack all those into a fifth variable, a vector. And then I can say data or whatever variable name equals DLM read. This space is optional parentheses, read from what file, separated by what separator, and then the range that I want, the submatrix that I want right there. So let's go ahead and run that code. All right, and there we go right there. So comparing that to the original, oh, the original got a little bit messed up somehow up there. But in any case, you can see that this is in fact row two to row four and column three to column four. Now that's going to work with any comma separated value file. Like if I change this from basic matrix.csv to basic underscore cell.txt, it will work, although I'm going to get some a little bit idiosyncratic results. Actually, excuse me, I meant to do that up here at the top in this one. I want to grab the entire file. All right, so this is what I get. Now let's check out what's in that file. So basic cell.txt. So I've got a variety of data types here. I've got numeric, I've got some text, I've got literally not a number, I've got a big old date, uh, a one, and then a blank after the comma right there. And there you can sort of compare to what I end up with in octave. The numbers read in just fine. The text data was converted to zeros. The not a number was left as not a number. The date got truncated as just like the 10 right there. The one got read in, and then the blank filled in with a zero. So DLM read is only getting numbers. It's not really working with more sophisticated or fancy 
text. And it's also not going to work with Excel spreadsheets. Now we're going to try and see if we can read in with Excel. To do that, I'm going to need to install a particular package. I will include these links that I'm using in the video description. So let's see if we can get this to work. So I'm just going to copy over package load IO. And if you've ever noticed when you open up Octave, there's actually this little command window, this GNU Octave command window that pops up in the background. And in this window, I'm going to paste in package load IO. In fact, before I do that, let me hit enter a couple times, right? Because something with the for with the output formatting got a little weird there. So I've got a new prompt right there and I'm going to paste in package load IO. I could have just done this in the command window. I now realize uh, right there, but whatever, we'll hit enter and see if it works. All right, so far so good. Now let's see if we can read data in using Excel. So I'm going to copy this over, although I'm going to simplify it. So I already tried this right here. It doesn't work. I may or may not leave that in the final version that I post online, but I'm going to now try XLS read using my Excel spreadsheet. I'm not going to worry about these extra inputs, and I'm going to see if I can read that into matrix A right here and then display it out and see how it looks. Hey, we got our data. Awesome. So that's fantastic. That was relatively easy to use. I'm just going to resize my screen and try it again. All right, so the data in the file, unfortunately, I don't have Microsoft Office on the computer that I'm recording this on, but it's just basically uh, student IDs, which I made up in column one, student names, their text names that I also made up. I made up all this data in column two, and then a bunch of fake grades in columns three, four, and five. But this is the data from the file. Now it is being read in as a matrix and not as a table or a cell array or any other format, but that's great. We can read in numeric data from file. All you have to do is run that uh, load package IO command in either your command window or the you know, command prompt uh, black screen over here. And then you have access to XLS read and the input is simply the file name that you wanna read in. Now we could complicate this by reading in only a subset of the data. We could specify that we wanna read in from a particular sheet. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that. And then you can also specify rows and columns. You know, this is how you identify rows and columns in an Excel spreadsheet, like column C, row three, uh, column A, B, uh, row 40, for example. So that should also work. But I'm going to leave it there. Just keep it real short. That was quick and easy. These are excellent alternatives for you if you are an Octave user.